No, I just wanted to document my events of today. So let me give you a brief understanding of what we're doing and where we are and what's happening today. Um, I needed some medical treatment for my foot. It's a serious thing. I had an orthopedic appointment. They scheduled it at the county hospital. Because of prior incidents I had at one of the clinics related to this hospital, same people, same game, filed a grievance. Didn't get anything resolved. Told them on the 10th, this is what is going to happen. Well, we argued it and we discussed it and they didn't do anything and I didn't care. I don't care what other people do. I only care what I do. Okay, so here's the skippy. These people demand, require, they say it's their policy, they're following CDC guidelines. They require I wear their mask or a mask, I wear their gloves, I do this, I submit to that, screening, we're going to take your vitals, and I object. I ask them, what is your legal written authority? And they don't have any. I said, all you got to do is provide me some written law, either state law that says you're authorized to do this and my rights, my medical rights to deny a certain procedure is now suspended, terminated or otherwise eliminated. Please provide me some law. And they don't and they can't. So I start turning on my video recorder, my phone, which kept cutting in and out, and I capture the events of the day because I told them I'm going to test this. They go, oh, it's the virus. Dun, 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 dun. So basically, I just say I respectfully decline your procedure. The only law I'm required to abide by is wearing a mask. That's in the governor's order, and that's in the county order. But as to gloves, I ask them, well, who created the gloves? And nobody can respond. Look, they bring in security. I go around the barriers here. By the, They put up all these chairs, and they block all this off with a stop sign. And they're all, security, get security. And so I go upstairs to the second floor, I go around their barriers, I get on the elevator, I go to the wrong department, I go to neurology instead of orthopedics. It was an honest mistake. But while I'm in there waiting to get help, I see security running all over the planet in the building. It's funny as hell. So when I get done and, and they tell me, oh, this is neurology, you need to go over to there. As I'm rolling out, well, I see security running and waiting for the elevator, and I just kind of slowed up a little. Once security got on the elevator and left, I went where security just was. Well, the last place we should look for them is the place we just were. It's crazy. So I just go to, look, I'm not doing anything except exercising my rights under the law. It's called Enjoyment of Legal Rights, the UNRWA Civil Rights Act in California, uh, Civil Code Section 52.1, and there's a few other in there. So you'll see in the next spot of the recording when it comes on, I'm in the uh, waiting room at orthopedics, and the entire room's empty. I film it all. And all of a sudden, here comes, uh, she needs a name. I'm going to call her Joanne Security. When Joanne comes busting in, and she's in her mask, she's not wearing any gloves, and she's all out of breath. We need. It's funny as fuck. It's like a Three Stooges movie. I, I ran him around the building and they finally caught up. Here he is. The first place we started. So, Joanne's all. We need, we need to go get screamed. So, at this point, I'm not going to do. A lot of narration. I want to try and let the video speak for itself, but I will tell you, I looked down and the camera wasn't fucking recording and it missed some really cool stuff. But I'll narrate it in and out. I guess I'll go through and do this. This is how you do it. Okay, this is the county and their security telling me you have to follow our policy. You, you're mandated. Well, really, what mandate is that? And they could not cite a single code. In fact, I told them. I'm a member of a protected class of people. I'm disabled. My actions, understand this, my actions here today are considered under federal law protected acts.
So you're going to be looking at two causes of action for one, discriminating against a disabled person, and two, dis discrimination against a disabled person while performing acts as a disabled person, acts that are protected under federal law. She kept running to the doorway and getting on her radio and calling somebody. He's saying this, but I don't know what it means. And they'd tell her, go back and try this. And she'd come back and try this. And I'm like, I'm not buying into any of this crap. So let me let it go for now, and we'll catch up in a few. Thank you. I have 11 o'clock appointment. Hi, sir. Hi, how are you? Uh, no, I decline. Thank you. You have to. I don't have you to. The, have only to state, the only state law I'm required to follow is wear a so mask. The rules here, because of COVID, everyone needs a visitor's pass. That's not an excuse. Look, that's the rules here. Uh, rules? Yes. Rules do not trump state law or federal law. Look, I'm a qualified individual no with a disability, here? and you can't deny me I access or participation to a public facility. You cannot create or manufacture rules, policies, or practices or procedures that do not comport, comport with the law. So we're clear? I'm a member of a protected class of people known as the disabled. Okay, so what's happening here? What's happening here? She's going into round two of intimidation factor. She pulls out her gloves. You have to. Look, I'm putting my gloves on as if what? I'm going hands on, Charlie. Send back up. He's a terrorist in a wheelchair. Oh, my goodness. Doesn't work. Stop the intimidation tactics, the coercion tactics, the rules tactics for somebody that might believe that because I'm not that person. Now, the next next part gets pretty interesting. She brings in Joe back up. Um, I'm going to call him Bubba. You make your own. He's either Joe or Bubba. So uh, he comes in, and it just it gets crazy. I'm going to play some circus music now because you'll see why. The guy keeps walking up on me, and I say, Sir, please stay six feet away. You're, you're violating your own policy. You're a hypocrite. He's putting on his gloves, but first he has to take off these, like, he's got forearm protectors, like he's a linebacker or a lineman, dude, for the Packers or something. That's all intimidation. And he's got this face shield on that obviously doesn't fit or whatever, because he comes and gets right up on me, and he's taking it off and playing with it, and I'm like, dude, please get six feet away from me. So how do you deal with security? In a, in a county institution during the coronavirus, you say, Mr. Security, please stay six feet away from me. <laughs> I'm not making this up. As we can see, there's nobody in the room. protecting can you cite me some state law ma'am can you cite me some federal code of regulation ma'am Is this what we've come to? Look at how she's postured up on me. And she's asking for permission for a 47 or a 49. And that's to lock down and secure the environment. And watch what she does next, dude. It's the next number three trick, I think, in the book for here's how I intimidate somebody who's simply asking for their rights to be acknowledged. So she goes and checks all the doors, dude, locks all the perimeters down, dude, and then returns to her, her position of power. Dun, da, da, da. I need more circus music for this crap, dude, so I'm going to play it like she does the time. 
secures the environment from a guy in a wheelchair with a screwed up foot seeking orthopedic help. Are you kidding me? Is this what the virus has led us to? No, this is what we already did all the time. I just expose it for what it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's the co-star of the show. It's either Joe or Bubba. I'll let you decide. Now, notice JB, he's got that plastic face shield on. He's got a mask underneath. He's got these arm pads on, see him on each side? He's geared up. He's coming up on me. What's he doing? What's he gonna do next? Oh, look, it was Joanne's first tactic. I'm gonna put on my blue gloves. But before I do that, I have to take off my forearm protectors. Meanwhile, I'm standing in your face two and a half, three feet away, violating the policy that I'm claiming I'm here to enforce and protect. Now, here's the next thing. Here's the next problem. He says, it's the rule. Everybody does it. It's the building law. The building can make laws? Are you kidding me? I ask him for state law or federal law, federal code of regulation. Should the CDC want to move something that's a guideline, a recommendation, a suggestion, advice, not mandatory into law, they put it before Congress. Congress votes on it, it gets passed, it gets signed, it goes into what's called the FCR, Federal Code of Regulations. I asked them, can you cite me some Federal Code of Regulations? Because otherwise it's a guideline and it's not mandatory on me as a public person. So he's going to have to get a screen. He has to leave because he's not willing to leave, so he's going to have to be in front of him. See, you hear Joanne, he, he has to be screened. He, he refuses to do so. And JB says, sir, you have to be screened. And she's, yeah, he refuses to do so. And I say, please cite me some state law that requires me to jump through There's any building hoop. Law, sir. There's, There's building There's not law. building law. Look, you can't discriminate against a handicapped person. You're a public entity, okay? Well, everybody else is getting screened. Well, that's, not, the, that's not a reason to discriminate against somebody else because you do it to everybody else. I'm here for your 11 o'clock appointment, ma'am. For what doctor? I don't know, orthopedics. My foot's in my foot's in really bad condition. You, are you denying me services of a public entity? Are you de are you denying me services of a public entity? Sir, you're gonna have to get screened, and we can take you back up. We're not. According to what law, ma'am? According to what law? The building doesn't make laws. And there you have it. Next time I looked down, it wasn't recording, so what just happened right there didn't get recorded. But I'll narrate it for you, and then it'll fit right back into where it picks up when I realize I'm not recording. So, you saw JB. He moved the little concert barrier there, the little strip with the post. He cleared out a path so he could come hands-on. He actually put his hands on the headrest of my wheelchair and thought he was going to move it. It's like a 420 pound wheelchair. I had it turned off with the brake on. JB was not going to move my chair. That was not a question in my mind. But I immediately told him he needed to back off by what authority, enforcement authority he had to go hands on. And then I started citing him some law. I told him, Putting your hands on my wheelchair was the same as putting your hands on me as a disabled person. My chair as an assistive device is one and the same as me as a disabled person. I considered that to be assault. And he just immediately checked up with Joanne and they reverted to the door and they got on their radios. A 
I'll tell you what's happening right here is I told them they were denying me services of a public entity, that their procedures and policy were nothing more than discrimination, and I encouraged them to call the county sheriff, the law enforcement agency having jurisdiction over criminal or physical enforcement of any law. I encouraged them to do it. And then this is what I told them. When the cops get here, I'm going to explain this to them just like it is, and I'm going to tell them they want you to come here and they want you to enforce their discriminatory policy. They want you to be the enforcers of discrimination because they can't. And of course, I'd ask the police or the sheriff to stay six feet away while we sort this all out. But in all this time, 30, 40, 50 minutes an hour goes by, no police ever show up. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, are you, are you following JB through these proceedings here? Well, she's on the radio trying to get some kind of guidance from who knows who. Shields up, Captain. Shields down, Captain. He can't get through the plastic shield. So what are they going to do to me? <laughs> Please remain six feet away, sir. Shields up, Captain. They, they know that. They know. Yeah, I, I informed them. Sorry, um, did you guys still want to see him? Even though he passed the check screen, he wasn't screened. We've taken video cameras. Uh, Are you kidding me? Now security guard Joanne is asking my medical provider if they still want to see me because I bypassed screening and because I'm shooting video. What the hell interference kind of crap shit is that? Is that sanctioned in the law somewhere? Or is that policy? Or is that a recommendation? Or is it guidelines? So I immediately respond to the people behind the plastic and tell them you can't let them create discriminatory practices and mandate them on you. You got your own opinion. You got to act independently. And, and she responds, well, we're checking with our supervisor. Damn skippy you are. So what you see next is policy enforcer Joanne educating, teaching, and growing up JB Security Jr. Oh yeah, don't look at me. Listen, pay attention. That we can't do anything and you go away and I'm going away if I can find the key to get in the fucking door. But we're going away and he's sitting there and he's going to get what he's entitled to. Why? Because he knows the law and we don't. And so if I can ever find the key to getting this door, I'm going in and we're just trying to get away. I suspect she's in there telling them not to give me service. But it's, it's clear their policy is not state law and they can't mandate that I do anything. She just said we can't really do anything.
Alexander rules. Okay, back to the action. I told security they couldn't discriminate against me. They had no enforceable procedures. I told the people behind the plastic if they bought into the discrimination of security enforcers of policy that they'd be liable. They'd check with their superiors. Look, it all came down to this. The medical people sent their charge nurse out. She identified herself and then she had a bunch of things she wanted to say and I pretty much put her in her place as well. Um, I was a little rude, I did interrupt her, but you know what? Sometimes things apply as things apply. And when I want to imply something, I don't need to hear everything you need to say to tell me I'm right. She told me I'm right. She says we're going to waive all the screening requirements. She says we're going to give you the treatment you're entitled to and that you deserve. And then she asked me, and here's where the damn video camera, cell phone stopped recording. She asked me to stop recording video. She asked me to delete the video. I told her I would take the matter under submission. Turns out now, since I wasn't actually recording anyway, it doesn't matter what I told her because there wasn't any video of that specific portion anyway. But as you can see, when the video picks up again, this all fits into place. My narrative is accurate, true, and conclusive. Well, you are, ma'am. You're requiring I jump through some hoops that are not mandated by law because they're your policy. Because you choose to do it. Should I go to the County Department of Agriculture, the Recorder's Office, Parks and Recreation? They do not make requirements that you do for goods and services of a public entity. What makes you think you're special, ma'am? I will be back. Thank you. Thank you kindly, ma'am. I appreciate it. Ma'am, my leg is hurting. Can I get a chair to put it up as a reasonable accommodation under the ADA? 42 USCS 12182. I'm just going to use one of these chairs then. The long and short of it is, as I said, I called the county recorder's office, I called the Department of Rec and uh, Parks and Recreation, um, County Department of Agriculture, and asked all of them if they required that I submit to screenings and testing and wear gloves and masks and jump through hoops, and they said no. So I asked this facility what made them special that they could create such a policy to exclude a protected person who is disabled. They didn't have a response. I think you uh, saw the charge nurse said, I need to go back and talk to my supervisor again. You see, it's no different than when I go through that door and go in the back and they want to take my blood pressure. I respectfully decline. They cannot deny me services. They want to take my temperature or get my weight and height in the back. I respectfully decline. Why? You have the right to decline medical services and treatment. You only have to take the ones you want. It may be their policy to get your weight, height, temperature, blood pressure, but it's not mandatory or secured by written law. Policy governs these people. It doesn't govern society as a whole. So you see how they try to use security to throw me out and intimidate me. And even security violates their own policy. I had to repeatedly ask these people to stay six feet back. They put their hands physically on my chair. I asked them pursuant to what legal authority they had to try and put hands on me. And that I consider that to be assault. I also suggested they could call law enforcement if they wanted law enforcement to uh, execute their form of discrimination against me. Well, you can see it's been about 20 minutes now and there's no law enforcement here. They met, they conferred, and they came to the conclusion, we cannot exclude him. We cannot eject him. We cannot deny him services of a public entity. They cannot deny me participation in 
the goods and services or activities of a public entity as set forth under Section 504 of the 1973 Rehabilitation Act, otherwise known as Title 29 of the United States Code, Section 794. And when I told him that, plus this is part of the Americans with Disabilities Act, Title 42 of the United States Code, Section 12101, well, then they went back in the back room, and that's where they are huddling. When in doubt, punt. But this is no different than the little black girl who tried to get into the all-white school, uh, Brown versus Topeka Board of Education. They ended up sending federal troops in, and that little black girl went into that all-white school. She got participation. She got goods, services, and to uh, be in the activities of a public entity. Especially when these public entities, like this hospital right here, receives federal dollars, federal Medicaid dollars. And to obtain those or receive those benefits and dollars, they have to sign a non-discrimination contract with the federal government stating they will abide by the Americans with Disabilities Act. They will not discriminate. And if they do, they waive their 11th Amendment sovereign immunity as the state to sub subsequent litigation. See, I came here with the intent to litigate this. That's why I'm still sitting here and they're still behind closed doors thinking about it. We do this to everybody. Did you hear the security guard earlier? Everybody does it. Well, I can't be responsible for what everybody else does, but I'm certainly responsible for what I do. And since I know the law and I know my rights, I stand up, or I should say today, I'm sitting down on them in my wheelchair. But where I roll, my rights in the law rolls with me. Everywhere they keep saying it's policy, it's policy, it's guidelines. Policies do not govern society as a whole. They govern employees. Guidelines are nothing more than advice. Mere suggestions are not mandatory. Neither a policy nor a guideline has the Can effect of the written law. Because like my foot hurts like you wouldn't believe just like it did then and I've had enough of this I'm gonna play out the rest of the video I may do a narrative finalization I don't feel the need if you feel the need you didn't get it but I'm done here Alexander rules yeah, we're all, looks like we're all tied up now, folks. This is what you get. Delay, delay, delay. Figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. Can we get an attorney on the phone? Where's county counsel? Where's, where's counsel for the hospital? What do we do? We don't know what to do. You see, now we're also creating a record. I'm going to get a hold of security's reports. He refused. He refused. That's not true. I respectfully declined. There's a difference. They like to use refused because it sounds so derogative, negative. Oh, how dare he, he refused. See, the other thing is you never raise your voice to these people. You never use profanity. As long as you're polite, courteous, and respectful towards them, they can't say you're creating a work stoppage. You're disturbing the peace. In fact, when it gets real heavy and heated, I usually talk softer almost to a whisper and that makes him lean in closer to even hear more of what I'm saying it's all in how you play the game and I play pretty damn good I think well here we are about 20 plus minutes in and I'm still sitting here and not getting service law enforcement ain't here throwing or hollering me out either So you have to stand up for your rights and you have to demand them. How many people when they put the hands on your chair and ordered you to leave would have left? I would say probably 95% or more. Me, I just dig deeper into my knowledge of law and start citing codes and statutes that I know they don't have a clue about. And I know they're on the other side going, oh shit, I don't know what that means, but it sounds like he does. Okay, here we go. It appears we have some action. Hi, there. Hi ma'am. We understand you don't want to get your temperature taken. That's fine. 
Okay. Ma'am, it's respectfully, it's no different than when we okay. go in the back. Hold on. Then when we go in the back room, if I decline to have my blood pressure taken yeah. or my height and weight, okay. you can't deny me good services or treatment, even though I understand that's your policy that you do that. Policy is not state law, ma'am. Sir, so please, uh, I would ask you to let me finish what I have to say, and then I'm happy to hear everything you have to say. Yes, ma'am. Respectfully, okay? So, um, we will see you. There are a couple of things. We do need to have you sign consent to be seen. That is, we need to have that because you're actually allowing us to, to see you. So, um, yes, ma'am. I discussed that on the phone with the nice lady there, that? and she was supposed to have these documents yeah, here for me today. We have it for you all set up. So let me finish, please, everything I have to say, and then I'll be happy to listen to what you have to say, okay? Because then it will just expedite this, and you can be seen. Oh, now they want to expedite this, as if I was the one creating the delay. I knew the law. I knew my rights. They obviously didn't. And this is what you get when you stand up for your rights. I hate this damn video camera phone. It stops recording at the most inopportune times, or if you barely touch something, it switches screens. Hey, look. I, I spoke to you yesterday, and I told you that we had some document documentation for you to sign. Yes. Um, this one is our HIPAA. Um, I'm intimately familiar with them, ma'am. Okay, if I could so just read over them real briefly, and yeah, then I... Yeah, definitely read over them, and then I highlighted the areas where you're supposed to sign and date. Um, if you feel more comfortable reading over them yourself. Absolutely, ma'am. Here ma is the document, the pants, and then this is a card for your medical record number. And can I have your phone number, please? Um, yeah. Actually, I called you yesterday, so I have it. It's your cell phone, right? Yes, ma'am. It's also my video camera. Ma'am, can I get your ID number, please, ma'am, and your name? There you go. Thank you so much. How about you, How sir? Thank you, ma'am. Can you tell me these folks' name, ma'am? They seem to be hiding and avoiding. I don't know their name. Okay. It's all right. A well-placed subpoena will get it. Deposition subpoena for production of business records, Code of Civil Procedure, Section 2020, Subdivision A. Or a federal subpoena deuces take them. That can be found in the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. It looks like we're pretty good here. I got the forms I need, and then I'm going to go through and get my treatment. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. This is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. This is what standing up for your rights in America in 2020 looks like. And you just saw it here first. Well, there you have it. Flipping the room on its head, along with security. And then... Uh... JB comes out and we ask him again, hey, sir. sir, can I get your name? Can I get your name, sir? Name, sir. And there goes security without providing his name. What does that tell you, people? I'm running off to hide. Well, there you have it, people. The law versus policy and guidelines. You are not subject to policy and guidelines. You can volunteer if you'd like. I simply choose not to volunteer. But don't think you're going to hit me up with your policy and your guidelines and tell me it's mandatory and that I have to comply. Well, the sad part is, is I'll never be able to get a job with the Whammo Corporation because Alexander doesn't jump through hoops. Alexander rules.
just imagine if it was their policy that we had to sing Kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs>